Have you ever wondered about the origins of the Catholic Church and its oldest orders? Let's dive into the fascinating history of the early days of Christianity and journey through the formation of some of the oldest orders within the Catholic Church. In the earliest days of Christianity, believers lived in close-knit communities, sharing possessions and devoting themselves to prayer and teaching. Over time, these communities evolved and organized into what we now recognize as religious orders. Among the oldest and most well-known of these orders are the Benedictines. Founded in the 6th century by St. Benedict of Nursia, the Benedictines are known for their commitment to prayer, work, and community life, encapsulated in the motto, Ora et Labora, or Pray and Work. They played a pivotal role in preserving knowledge throughout the Middle Ages, copying ancient manuscripts and establishing schools. Next, we have the Franciscans, an order founded by St. Francis of Assisi in the early 13th century. Inspired by the life of Christ, Francis sought to live in poverty and simplicity, serving others and caring for creation. The Franciscans' emphasis on love for all creatures and dedication to serving the poor profoundly influenced the church and the wider world. We then proceed to the Carmelites, an order known for their contemplative and mystical spirituality. This order is deeply rooted in seeking a personal experience with God through prayer and solitude. Following closely are the Cistercians, an order that emphasizes simplicity and manual labor. They are known for their austere lifestyle and commitment to self-sufficiency. Then we have the Camaldolese, a unique order that combines elements of monastic and hermit life. Their rhythm life balances communal and solitary prayer, work, and contemplation. Next, we encounter the Carthusians, who dedicate themselves to a solitary life of silence and prayer. Living in individual cells, their life is a continuous prayer with little interaction with the world outside their monasteries. Then there is, we have the Dominicans, also known as the Order of Preachers. Founded by St. Dominic in the early 13th century, the Dominicans sought to combat heresy through teaching and preaching. Their intellectual rigor and commitment to truth laid the groundwork for many of the Church's theological developments. These ancient orders, the Benedictines, the Franciscans, Carmelites, Cistercians, Camaldolese, Carthusians, and the Dominicans have not only enriched the Catholic Church but have also played a significant role in the evolution and spread of Christianity. They've left a legacy of faith, service, and intellectual pursuit that continues to inspire countless individuals globally. So, as we delve deeper into the intricate tapestry of the Catholic Church's history, let's remember the words of St. Augustine. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. These ancient orders have played a significant role in shaping the Catholic Church as we know it today. But how does one actually become a part of these venerable orders? How does one become a priest? Well, the journey to priesthood begins with something known as a vocation or calling. This is not a career decision or a lifestyle choice. It's not a path you stumble upon. It's a profound spiritual experience, a divine invitation if you will, that is deeply personal and unique to each individual. Now what does this calling look like? It's not a booming voice from the heavens or a sudden vision. It's more nuanced, more subtle than that. It might be a persistent thought, an unshakable feeling, a sense of purpose that grows over time. It could come during a moment of prayer or in the quiet stillness of contemplation. It could be inspired by a role model, a priest or a religious figure who embodies the life of service and faith. This calling, however, is not without its challenges. There can be doubts and questions, fears and uncertainties. The path to priesthood is not an easy one. It demands a profound commitment, a willingness to devote one's life to the service of others, to live in accordance with the teachings of the church, to become a beacon of faith and love. It's important to remember that this calling is not a solo journey. It's accompanied by discernment, a process of prayerful reflection and spiritual guidance. It involves conversations with priests, spiritual directors, and trusted mentors. It's about seeking clarity, understanding the call, and making the decision to respond. And this response, this yes to the call, is just the beginning. It marks the first step on the journey to priesthood, a journey that will involve years of formation, study, prayer, and service. So the call to priesthood is not a sudden event, but a gradual unfolding. It's a journey of faith, of self-discovery, of deepening one's relationship with God. It's a journey that demands commitment, courage, and a profound love for God and His people. The call to priesthood is a profound spiritual journey that begins with a deep, personal connection to God. So you've heard the call. What comes next? 
The answer to this question takes us to the heart of the journey toward priesthood, the seminary. A seminary is a specialized institution where individuals who feel they have been called to the priesthood undergo a comprehensive period of formation. This formation is not just about acquiring knowledge, but also about personal, spiritual, and pastoral growth. Let's delve into the details. The first phase of seminary formation is typically the pre-theology or philosophy studies. This phase could take anywhere from two to four years. Here, the seminarians are introduced to a wide range of philosophical ideas and methodologies. This lays the groundwork for their future theological studies, as philosophy and theology are intricately linked. After completing their philosophical studies, the seminarians move on to theology. This phase lasts for about four years. During this time, seminarians delve into the mysteries of the Christian faith. They study the Bible, the teachings of the church, the history of Christianity, and much more. But seminary formation is not just about academics, it's also about spiritual development. Seminarians are guided in their spiritual journey, learning to deepen their relationship with God through prayer, meditation, and reflection. They are taught to cultivate virtues such as humility, obedience, and charity, which are essential for a priestly life. Additionally, seminarians also engage in pastoral work. This is where they get a hands-on experience of what it's like to serve as a priest. They may be assigned to parishes, hospitals, or social service agencies. This practical experience allows them to apply what they've learned in the seminary to real-world situations. The seminary is not just a place of learning, but also a place of discernment. Here, the call to priesthood is constantly nurtured and tested. Seminarians are given the space to reflect on their vocation to ensure that they are truly called to this life of service. The seminary is where the call to priesthood is nurtured and tested, preparing aspirants for their future responsibilities. Once the seminary formation is completed, what happens next? Well, the journey of faith and service does not end with the completion of seminary education. Rather, it enters a new phase marked by the sacrament of holy orders or ordination, which signifies the official entry into the priesthood. The sacrament of holy orders is a sacred rite steeped in tradition and significance. It's a moment of profound transformation, where a man, having been called by God and formed in the seminary, is ordained by a bishop through the laying on of hands and the prayer of consecration. This sacrament bestows upon him the grace and spiritual power to perform the sacred duties of the church. After ordination, the newly minted priest is entrusted with the responsibilities of teaching, sanctifying, and governing. As a teacher, he's tasked with sharing the Word of God and the teachings of the Church, guiding the faithful towards a deeper understanding of their faith. As one who sanctifies, he administers the sacraments, celebrating the Eucharist, forgiving sins in the Sacrament of Reconciliation, anointing the sick, and more. And in his role as a governor, the priest leads the community, shepherding them in their spiritual journey and ensuring the smooth functioning of the Church. But remember, Becoming a priest is not about achieving a status or reaching a destination. It's about embracing a vocation, a calling to dedicate one's life in service to God and the Church. It's about becoming a channel of God's grace, a shepherd to His people, a beacon of light in a world that often grapples with darkness. So, while ordination marks a significant milestone in a priest's journey, it's not the finish line. It's more of a starting point, a new chapter in a lifelong commitment to serve, to love, and to be a living witness of Christ's message. Ordination is not the end of the journey, but the beginning of a lifelong commitment to serve God and the church. So what have we learned about the process of becoming a priest? In our exploration of the Catholic Church's oldest orders, we've seen a rich tapestry woven over centuries of faith and dedication. The Benedictines, Franciscans, and Dominicans, among others, have all played pivotal roles in shaping the church as we know it today. These orders are the very roots of Catholicism. Their traditions and teachings pass down through generations, influencing the lives of countless believers. The call to priesthood, a divine vocation, is an invitation to a life of service, sacrifice, and love. It's not a decision one takes lightly, it's a whisper in the heart, a gentle nudge towards a path less traveled. It's a commitment to hear, serve, and shepherd the people of God, to be a beacon of faith in a world that so often seems to be losing its way. Next, we have the seminary, the cradle of priestly formation. Here, aspirants are nurtured and molded, their minds enlightened and their spirits fortified. They delve into the depths of theology, philosophy, and pastoral care, equipping themselves with the knowledge and skills they'll need in their future ministry. 
But it's not all books and lectures. Seminary life is also about community, prayer, and personal growth, a holistic approach to prepare them for their sacred mission. And then comes ordination, the final step in this transformative journey. This sacrament, this sacred rite, is where the aspirant is conferred the grace and authority to perform the duties of a priest. It's a moment of profound significance, a testament to years of prayer, study, and discernment. Becoming a priest is a deeply spiritual and transformative journey, grounded in a rich tradition that dates back to the earliest days of the church. It's a path of selfless love and unwavering faith, a testament to the enduring power of the gospel message. It's a calling, a vocation, a life choice that shapes not just the individual, but also the community they serve. It's a noble and beautiful journey, filled with challenges and rewards, joys and sorrows. But above all, it's a journey of love, love for God and love for His people.